So my personal challenges on this trip um, primarily are with the air quality and we had several different vehicles without air conditioning so we had the windows down and traveling on the dirt roads with a lot of vehicles and exhaust um, it just it just can overwhelm your system and so uh, that's a huge challenge I think air conditioning in general is a, is a big challenge transportation overall is, is a big challenge for the area Train, little train cars at the park. Yeah, I think they should be attached together and they can be like a little trolley throughout the city. Human traffic. It's a different type of human traffic. Whoa, I know. <laughs> a mixture of, of traffic causing agents. Human car, wheelbarrows. I mean, wow. You got a guest coming to you. Welcome, said no weapon form against you, plus. Yeah. Open the corridor. Open the corridor for her. He said he'll make sure he works for you. <laughs> I didn't know you had a black kid. No. Yeah, he wants you to give him money. He said long time he didn't, he hasn't seen you. Like he knew you before. <laughs> This is like a human escort. Oh my god, these people. Wow. So we're here in one of the neighborhoods uh, that we visited within District 13, one of several before the um, Women's Empowerment Summit Address. You can see um, around here the conditions, the uh, dirt is and muddy and the uh, structures are, they're not in sanitary or um, structurally sound buildings. We're hoping this is something that when we come back to the U.S. we can raise funds to help. And here's one of the community gazebos they're setting up as well. So this would give a chance for the the village people to meet and have a place to have discussions. 
the cars get broken down because they overload them so much. They're waiting for you, man. That's a full house in there waiting for you to hear the lady speak. All right. We're going to speak to each other. All right. Yeah. Yeah. University of Liberia on this first visit. I think there's a great opportunity and from my background and experience I will share encouragement that when the opportunity does come for the young ladies uh, that we do encourage and help them to get into the schools as Honorable Edward Kikomo is, is helping in the community here. So encouragement is maybe first step. Okay? And then also persistence because we do have a lot to balance as the ladies, with the family and the children especially. And that's a very important job. It's actually a priority. I have two children of my own. So children's the priority. Education is next. God is first. Amen. God is first. And he sets these things in order for us and opportunities. I really believe that. So there's many challenges. I think we focus on the goal. We don't focus on the challenge. We, tell, we speak about our challenge. Because if we don't speak about our challenge to those in charge, they may not understand or be able to help us. Uh, so I encourage you to speak about the challenge and the need to uh, folks that are in the power, the folks that can't make a difference. Even to your friends and your family, speak about the needs in your schools and your community. And I see the change today. We got to walk through the villages to see that community center is being built up. It's a tremendous and lovely thing in the community. The impression like about Africa? So I didn't know what to expect. I expected more like rural or like rural areas, uh, not as much city, but 
now that I've come here, I've seen the downtown and a lot of the uh, businesses and the growth. So I think my impression now is there's a lot of opportunity for growth, both in the villages and in the city. So we met with um, the representative for District 13 the other night, and he invited us out for what I would consider a rally. <clears throat> so I did not know what to expect, um, but it was a very large turnout in a church, and uh, the women were very excited and motivated and encouraged by his direct investment in them. Uh, he basically um, took their needs to heart and invested his own money, and that set a great role model. And so they invited um, they invited me, uh, and the theme was education. So they uh, shared my education, and I shared um, a few things that I think profoundly affect my education, which is um, early encouragement and opportunity, seeking out opportunity. And so, um, really, my um, what I wanted to share with them was encouragement to seek the opportunities, but to do that by telling those in charge what they need and um, letting those around them help fulfill the needs, uh, in particular with education or um, other things. And that's exactly what they're doing. So I just think I echoed what is already happening uh, in their community. Is there a possibility of us going in there to look around? We just want to look at the destruction and, and, and stuff of that building. I just I'll make Thank you. Thank you. I remember walking up those steps. Wow. This is where I learned to swim, right in that pool. I dove off that board quite a few times. We're here on the site of the Ducor Hotel, which was um, a major establishment and flourishing before the war, and now it's just a skeleton. Um, so you still see like the remains are like almost a ruins type of atmosphere here, where the people have um, moved into the old structures, um, but it really has not been improved. So I think that's the main thing I expected was more of uh, desert-like uh, villages, and this is definitely more industrialized, and um, you can see that in more of like a downtown and markets and businesses. I think we have made it to the campus. Um, so where do we where do we turn? Where do we go? Uh, if you're on the campus now, we have a vehicle now. We find the campus you have. Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> um, we're at the entrance right now. The main gate. The main gate. They come in the main gate. I will send it on the way to give it to you. Okay. But I'm going to take you to the engineering building. I want to stop to take you to the engineering building. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I don't think we need to get out of this car before we bake. But we also need to change. We also need to Yeah, you can go sit under there. Just don't get bit by a snake. So we're here at the University of Liberia, the Findel campus, and the goal of this visit is to meet with the president of the university and a select group of um, the Society of Women Engineering students and really just learn about um, their research projects and, and the different areas they focus on here at the college and to 
first off build a relationship with them and, and hope that that grows into some potential collaborations uh, with the College of Engineering. So Dean, I've got a question. So what are um, some of your, 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 your biggest challenges, your, your major challenges here um, as a university or a learning institution? That this, this, uh, this coming graduation, we're going to be graduating 176 students in uh, four disciplines. Uh, where it's going to be played is a challenge, OK? Uh, and so those are some of the issues we look at. We have improved our laboratory, and it was a serious challenge some time ago, but now we're improving in that, in that area, and uh, we hope for better cooperation that, uh, because we use our laboratory to generate funds for the college. The faculty development is a challenge. Uh, getting qualified people and, and uh, having them stay uh, and look at our, our student population. Okay. Uh, sometimes classes are overcrowded. The job market now, the, the, uh, the availability of companies to accept our students is uh, very, very, very low. You know, sometimes, for example, I have graduated from school, and then some of the places you want to work, people tell you that they want someone to work with five years' experience. You've just graduated, you don't have five years' experience. So, uh, sometimes, you know, a few students we can, uh, can you know, afford to. Send up, then we accept it. The electrical is the only slab, and then for automation, robotics, and things like that. So we do some computer courses here too, but they are all geared into automation. Do you have any robots here? No, no, no. Okay. Yes, and uh, few stations. This. So again, we have a set up in this, we have this GNSS, so the GPS receiver. Like this, I have to get up with myself because I'm a primary engineer. The safety of the students uh, is, is a concern because they're looking at soils and concrete testing without any protective equipment. Uh, so there's a lot of airborne particulates in the labs. Um, you can notice that not only on the surfaces but the fans and the floors and other areas that are filled with the dust. Uh, it's noticeable when you walk in the room versus uh, some of the labs that are more controlled environment for the electronics, for example, uh, again, have some decent equipment in a more controlled environment, uh, but definitely need improvements in the, um, the mining, geology, uh, materials, labs, I would say. Uh, also, they, um, for the electronics, they're getting into robotics and some other uh, software. But they don't have uh, robots, they don't have drones or 3D printers. So these are all technologies that um, could benefit the college and I think would be a nice addition to, to the software and the computers that they already have. Thank you. How are you doing?
I'm studying electronic engineering and I am the chapter chairperson for Liberal Society of Women Engineers. My name is Edith N. Tapla. I'm a civil engineer. I graduated last year, December. I work with MBH Power and the National Authorizing Office in the Infrastructure and Energy Department. I used to be the president for Liberal Society of Women Engineers, but now I serve as an advisor. I prepared myself to see how best we can now engage in other investment possibilities that will generate income in partnership for the university. Right now, we depend 8 to 90 percent. Since 80 to 90 percent of the funding for the college comes from the government, uh, they hope to not rely on the government as much and again to seek up more private uh, partnerships and investments. Uh, I think that again interaction with the U.S. universities and others that may be interested to partner will bring a lot of strength to their vision for the university. Right now, we're going from September to June, and we up so far I've been struggling with that. Before now, we did the manual registration. It became difficult, so it's about two weeks. We had to go six to eight weeks for the training of the government, the board of the that involved. We have solved that problem to make it happen easier from wherever they are, and that had to be that problem. So, so we used to have to register in person? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. going on particularly with the small-scale artisanal miners here in Liberia that have been uh, more problematic I would say like putting in the necessary legislation okay putting in the necessary environmental safeguards uh, training for them so we've been involved in that and um, we have also been contributing to research for the bigger mining entities we find out that there have been some issues with what you know, they've been declaring to government, okay, and some of their, you know, some of the, um, the regulatory aspect that have not been too uh, clear when it comes to that. So we've been, you know, conducting research to present to government, but sometimes your own funding don't go a long way in collecting the necessary data and information that you need, so. Can you publish that uh, in journals or? Yeah, yeah, so. Online form? Yeah, uh, normally you have to apply to this scientific organization outside. Like where I come from, I'm, uh, you know, uh, an associate member or awesome. So sometimes, but it requires funding in order to publish and stuff like that. So those are some of the issues we have. And we'll be, you know, appreciative if we can have, have uh, any assistance in our line. They're very motivated to work in uh, various areas, including civil engineering, geo and mining engineering and electronics engineering. So um, each of them has a project in mind and potentially some interaction with the community, but that's not as strong as it could be. And I think that um, we can help bridge some of the, the uh, 
technical gap with some U.S. universities, and they already work with the University of Michigan through the society, but they were asking for more technical connections. They use LinkedIn and some other social media, so hopefully they will post some of our visit uh, online and also share with the Society of Women Engineers to get the message out uh, and to build a greater network. So before I came here to Liberia, this is my first trip, I expected more of a rural setting. Um, this is a very green, lush area here. There's lots of plants. And also I expected less infrastructure, more like um, the villages mostly. And this has definitely got uh, a big city appeal. There's car companies, uh, there's major businesses, gas stations. So uh, it's definitely been damaged. So we visited the University of Liberia and met with several groups of people, including um, the, the new president of the college, uh, the dean of the School of Engineering, and also um, four ladies from the Society of Women Engineers, which was established back in 2014. Um, there's not a lot of U.S. connections with the University of Liberia, and we're hoping to first start with relationship building uh, in the engineering department. And so we toured the labs and uh, looked at the electrical engineering labs, the um, materials labs, and there is a focus here on geology and mining. So there's a soil lab, a concrete testing lab. <clears throat> and really what we saw there was um, some good research going on, but also some concerns that the equipment could not be maintained. Although they received quite a bit of um, support from USAID, <clears throat> to, to receive the equipment, uh, maintaining it, and also training how to use it is lacking. And even the professors themselves um, showed a great interest in having um, more connection with the U.S. professors for professional development and um, kind of growth in their field and collaboration. So <clears throat> the president also mentioned that um, the, the interaction with the faculty uh, for research funding would be a great um, chance to work together. Currently there's a heavy reliance, like 80 to 90 percent, upon the Liberian government uh, for the university funding and he really, the university president, really wants to break out of that into more private uh, collaborations and investments um, so that the university doesn't have uh, a heavy reliance directly on the government. With regards to the Society of Women Engineers, um, they're a diverse group and most are going into their master's uh, level, but it's still unknown what jobs are available. So that connection between uh, learning and the, the future job that these ladies would um, be potential candidates for uh, they find struggles here. This, these are some of the first generations of women engineers. So as you can imagine, as um, there were struggles in the U.S. and other places for the women to be integrated into the workforce, they face a very similar uh, challenges here. Although they are competent and have studied in the same classrooms, uh, there's, there's still some hesitancy in the private workforce sector to hire the women. Uh, and so with having a previous woman president of Liberia, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of push to, to integrate the, the, um, this next generation of women engineers into the workforce. So that's still unknown how that will um, actually occur, but it seems very hopeful um, that, that they will be able to contribute to the workforce here after receiving higher education. So. Uh, the society is alive and well there, and um, they really look forward to having the U.S. interaction and exchange uh, in the coming years. A city of deep secrets, young blood with big dreams to stack riches, blessed with the best beaches, nice dishes, money talk, bullshit walks, no hitches. Now what a drive, feet, eat feet, so you're doing your set. Rest assured, your mistakes get corrected in the place of my birth.